Hi, and welcome back to Merseyside on uh, a bright but very cloudy uh, lunchtime where we've got uh, 600 watts of PV uh, from our system, which means we've probably got two, three, maybe 400 watts of surplus power uh, after the necessary power for our fridges and bits and pieces, uh, laptop power supply have been taken into account. So I've got a few hundred watts of surplus power uh, available and this is quite a nice opportunity to show how well the um, system is working, the Mark II uh, power router system, um, which if anybody finds this other than on the Open Energy Forum, uh, go to the openenergyforum.org I think and you'll find all the details uh, about this. I'll put the link um, along with the um, description when this goes on YouTube. So what we're looking at now is um, a very handy analog uh, disk meter provided by NOAA on the uh, forum, so many thanks for that. And as you can see here, the uh, dial, which has a black uh, section and a yellow section, really is staying very static. So what that means is we're not being charged for any import uh, cost from the grid and we're not losing any power to the grid. And the reason that we're getting this jinking backwards and forwards is because we have a triac um, putting power to a dump load, which in our case is a 3 kilowatt immersion heater. So while I'm chatting here, our water is getting uh, hotter um, very slowly. I'm seeing um, several pulses per second. It's the same number of pulses per second as this is jinking backwards and forwards. Uh, a little bit too many to, uh, to count. I don't know, six or something like that. Um, but the point is that disk is staying uh, still. Now we can demonstrate how the energy bucket works, which is all part of the Mark II uh, design, which this sketch is. If I put my immersion onto constant, let the disk come round, and then put it back onto just PV, so now we're consuming power at 3 kilowatts for the immersion, and when I switch it off, the system will then sort itself out. This wind back period is the energy bucket filling and when it gets to the halfway point, which is 1800 joules, uh, once per main cycle a decision is made. If the bucket's got more than 1800, the triac fires. Um, if it's got less than 1800, it doesn't. So we've got a dynamic system with a response time of a few tens of milliseconds, which uh, is really doing uh, a very good job. And with inexpensive components, um, it's, uh, it's working very nicely. So what I'd like to try and do now is to show the effects of making two changes in the sketch. One is phase cal, which is to do with aligning the uh, waveforms of the voltage and um, current, and the other is the absolute calibration. Um, and I think it's interesting just to have a look at the, uh, the numbers. Now with this particular set of hardware that I've got, um, the optimum value for phase cal uh, came out as 0.8. There's a tool which I put up on the forum which allows uh, this to be seen. It's not particularly um, sensitive, but um, or the, the 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 need to get the optimum value is not particularly sensitive. But for this particular rig, it's 0.8. So I'd like to change it by uh, a unit. Let's round it up to two now. Which, if you um, look as to what phase cal means, is quite a drastic uh, change. So I'll just put this up to two. So I've changed it to two, uploading the code, and after a short interruption interruption of service while the um, Arduino uh, goes to sleep while it's getting its new sketch in there, uh, normal service will be resumed with um, phase cal of two. Now I'll just put on the immersion full whack and then switch it off so we can get the bar rounded to the right place. So we should have the same amount of time to recharge the energy bucket to the halfway point and we're now operating with um, a phase cal of 2. Now what phase cal of 2 means is that rather than using the voltage measurement that you've just measured or the one you've measured one loop before, you predict where the one after that is going to be. Rather than waiting for that time, you make a prediction. So this is distorting the waveform slightly, but it's a recognized technique for phase shifting uh, in advance when that is necessary. But it's not having very much effect here. So I'm now going to go to a phase cal of three, which is a huge um, amount of prediction. 
and see what happens. This, this really is going to distort the voltage waveform quite significantly uh, as seen by the Arduino and one would expect um, the balance to be uh, upset, well I would anyway. So we're still getting our flashing, just reset the, um, the disk and here we go. Now I've sort of overshot that a little bit so let's have another loop. So the motion is now fully on don't let it go far beyond the end point. Winds back and here we are. So with this system which ideally wants a phase cal of 0.8 um, even putting in a phase cal of 3 which as I say is a huge amount of prediction it's not really affecting um, making much effect. I like destructive tests so I'm going to go for phase cal of 5. This is going to completely upset the voltage waveform as seen by the Arduino but um, it's only a software change but let's see what happens. The balance surely has to be uh, affected when we do that. So that's now had effect. Bring the dial back and I'm pleased to see we have a small amount of import it's not very large. Uh, last time I saw it, um, I recollect my recollection, it was a bit bigger than this. It probably depends on the amount of surplus power that's available. But as you can see, the balance is not as good now as it was before. But with the phase cal of five, that's predicting several samples in advance as to what the voltage is going to be based on the information you've already got. That's a ridiculous way to be measuring power. But even with such a um, a drastic error in the system as that, we're still getting very good balance. Um, just to show, um, if I were to put the immersion circuit off, this is the raw export that our PV is capable of at the moment. If I switch it back on again, that sudden dash was um, 3 kilowatts of consumption. So that is how much surplus power we have. That is how much um, and if I sorry, put it on full again, this is the amount, this is what 3 kilowatts looks like. So even with this very severely distorted measurement system, we're still getting remarkably good balance. And as I say, Mark II seems to be pretty uh, immune to all the errors that we put into it. So I'm going to set uh, phase curl back down to 1 now, which is close enough to 0 0.8, which is what I measured for my system so as far as we're concerned phase cal is now set up correctly for this system and we should therefore see um, minimal drift. Just bringing the bar back to the middle, energy bucket um, fills up to halfway and we have a pretty close to zero drift system. Now when the energy bucket was filling up um, this little yellow bar here was going back something like its own dimension which is a centimeter or something like that. So a centimeter on the circumference of this disk corresponds to the 1800 joules that the bucket is filling up to as measured by my uh, virtual my measuring system. So if I were to change the absolute power rating, the actual the absolute calibration of my power measurement system you would expect to see a different amount of wind back as the bucket fills. It would take the same time no, it wouldn't. It would take uh, a longer time because it, it fills at a rate of the surplus power at the moment. So if I alter the absolute calibration, it would take a different amount of time for the uh, bucket to fill. Now I've currently got the power um, cal uh, value set at the moment to 0 0.1. I forget exactly why it's 0 0.1, but it is. Let's change it to a half of that. 0.05. This is just near the um, top of the setup function. So 0.05. Recompile the code. Now what is going to happen now is that the measurement system is less sensitive so it's going to take twice as long for the energy bucket to fill. So we're now just changing over to the new sketch and it'll take a bit longer for the energy bucket to fill but it'll soon get to the stage where the dial has stopped, which I can see. I'm now going to wind this round to the same place as before and I think you'll find it takes longer for the energy bucket to fill. There we go, it's taken twice as long for the energy bucket to fill but having got there the performance is exactly the same. Now if you are too far out on this 
let's go for um, let's go down to 0 0.02 from 0 0.05 so this is, means that the energy bucket is really going to take an extremely long time to fill what that means is that while the energy bucket's filling you could be exporting real power and uh, because you can only re export a certain amount of power before you lose it through certainly through digital meters or any non-reversing meter um, then that power will be lost uh, to you so with the dial is now locked I'm going to wind it round somewhat further than I did before because it's now gone well round beyond and the, the window and it's now winding back and it's going to take a substantial time to wind back and if I've timed it right you'll still be able to see the mark when we get to the uh, lock place I hope I've got this right yes I think you can hopefully just about see it if you can't see the yellow you can see um, the um, the black here so we are now at the operating point the system is working just the same but instead of the system seeing 60 joules per triac cycle um, going in or out of going out of the energy bucket it's seen five joules or something like that but because the energy buckets calculations are all done in floating point arithmetic um, it really doesn't matter whether the system is calibrated right or not so when I on the forum have said it doesn't matter it really doesn't you've seen it with your own eyes we've not now got a power caliber point O2 uh, as opposed to a power color point 0.1 um, if we were to go the other way and let's say make it point 0.5 we're now making the um, system what are we doing if we're making the number bigger it's going to over measure and it's going to take less time for the energy bucket uh, to fill so bring it round switch it off and almost immediately we're into the operating zone so instead of filling to waiting for 1800 joules before the operation starts it's waiting for a very few joules um, all that means is that you might um, be slightly out of step with the um, with the supply meter initially but once the system gets going it's really not going to matter because you always have uh, at least one what hours worth of leeway in your digital meter um, it doesn't matter whether you start in the bottom of that window or the top of that window you, you, you'll never you'll never routinely be importing or exporting as long as you stay within um, a one watt hours window which is 3600 joules and these little jitterings here are well every firing of the trike is 60 joules so if you had two firings in consecutively that would be 120 so the jitterings backwards and forwards are of the order of 120 150 joules in a window of 3600 before you get charged or before you lose power so mark 2 is is well operating within um, within the window that's allowed if you weren't using my mark 2 idea where you have continuous monitoring of um, current and voltage and you were using an alternative approach where for example for maybe a second you measured the power and then told some external device how much power to allocate for the next second then you wouldn't have the kind of response time that we were seeing here um, as you can see this response time is is um, is very quick if I put the um, I can't really um, show it with the setup like this but if I were to put the um, the immersion on full then or some other load on full you would see the, um, the neon which records when the immersion is being fired to go out instantly it goes out within 20-30 milliseconds uh, if that so it's a very reactive system which any other kind of um, retrospective um, measurement system would, would not have the response time um, that I'm getting here so we've talked about phase cal and how insensitive it is we've talked about absolute cal and it's completely non-sensitive to, to that um, I can't think of anything uh, more to show at the moment but um, it's uh, I shall let's put on an, another load here's Henry the vacuum cleaner so because Henry the vacuum cleaner is taking more power than we have available the dial's going away I put Henry on full speed um, we're not getting any pulses on our water um, for good reason 
eventually this will come round and if I switch Henry off you'll see the bucket start to fill up in the same way as it did before but because it's on a very tight um, power cowl it won't appear to wind, wind back it'll just start working almost immediately so I'll switch Henry off and there we are we started working immediately because power cowl is 0.5 if I put power cowl back uh, to 0.1 as it was before and we'll just repeat the test. I'll start Henry going. So when the dial comes back, I'll switch Henry off, and you should see the energy bucket filling up, which will take uh, a couple of seconds, a centimetre on the dial, something like that, and uh, and then that's probably enough for today. Okay, here we go. So I just briefly saw um, the dial going back. So we're now in exactly the same situation as we were at the beginning of this demo. We've been through calibration, we've been through power cal, we've put on an external load. Um, if anyone um, is not sure how it's working, um, just stick a message on the forum. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks for listening and uh, bye for now.